The genre of war cinema has been around as long as the medium itself, with the spectacle of mass conflicts lending itself to big budget movies and the inherent interpersonal tragedy fitting more intimate dramas. However, with the development of war film came an inevitable blueprint for so-called successful war movies. You had the triumphant adventurous war films from the post-World War II years, and then later down the line you have the post-Vietnam countercultural protest films which offered a dirtier, grittier and altogether more realistic vision of war's tragic reality. Now not every film on here centres around Vietnam, but each in their own way serves as an embodiment of the filmmaking community's refusal to produce shallow pro-war propaganda, and instead break the rules of the genre to show a truer vision of the world at war. With that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 war films that broke all the rules. 10 Casualties of War Starting out with The Strong Stuff, 1989's Casualties of War is a rare American war drama which breaks a cardinal, unspoken rule of the genre, which is that the Americans are typically always the good guys. Centering around a true story of a squad of US soldiers who kidnapped, tortured, raped, and murdered an innocent Vietnamese civilian to quote, boost morale. A war film that refuses to center the soldier as its hero and audience insertion persona, the film instead forces the viewer to empathize with the Vietnamese and question America's presence in the country as embodied by Sean Penn's extraordinary, hypnotically horrifying turn as the squad's sergeant. 9. Buffalo Soldiers 2001's Joaquin Phoenix vehicle Buffalo Soldiers offered an underseen early starring role for the Walk the Line star before superstardom came calling. This distinctly unpatriotic dark comedy had the misfortune of being released soon after 9-11, when American moviegoers were desperate to see some heroism at the pictures. However, in depicting US soldiers as heroine smuggling layabouts worthy of Animal House, Buffalo Soldiers wasn't the best film for those seeking some nationalistic pride. The film was, however, an ingenious subversion of the snobs versus slobs comedy subgenre, casting a likeable group of young everyday soldiers bored by their duty in East Berlin and unsure of what they're meant to be achieving in the country. This anarchic comedy both humanizes the forces themselves and questions the international adventurism they're sent to carry out. Eight, come and see. One of the most disturbing pieces of cinema ever created, this two and a half hour epic imagines wartime Belarus as a post-apocalyptic nightmare, depicting the invasion by Nazi forces as a trippy, terrifying nightmare of upsetting imagery as seen through the eyes of a Belarusian teenager. Disturbed by witnessing this amoral inhumanity, the protagonist's grip on reality seems to loosen throughout the film, and what begins as a much more conventional example of the war film genre gradually borrows imagery from both sci-fi landscapes and fantasy iconography in order to better encapsulate the unimaginable horrors of war. 7. Apocalypse Now Okay, so this is a little bit of a chicken and egg situation, but Come and See's viscerally unsettling and deeply surreal vision of war wouldn't have been possible were it not for the influence of the inventive, hypnotic Apocalypse Now. A sort of adaptation of Joseph Conrad's nightmarish adventure novella Heart of Darkness, the film transplants the story from British imperial invasion of the Congo to America's neo-imperial invasion of Vietnam, but the underlying themes and added tension remain the same. Unlike the traditional war movie, Movie, our hero here has no idea what he's doing in Saigon, or even how long he's been there, and his picturesque trip throughout the country only serves to illustrate the war's pointless, bloody folly. Everything about Apocalypse Now is strange, wrong, and designed to subvert the normalization of war. 6. Jarhead Directed by American Beauties' Sam Mendes, 2005's Jarhead is nowhere near as potently anti-war as many of the films listed here, and that is what makes this drama such a subversive example of the genre. Honestly, this jink Gyllenhaal vehicle is mostly about boredom. It's fitting since the film follows a Gulf War veteran who sees little so-called action, and therefore the protagonist's frustrated disinterest has more in common with most modern veterans' experience of war than earlier, more viscerally impactful depictions of warfare. Similar to HBO's triumphant miniseries Generation Kill, this film excels by depicting its soldiers as confused would-be heroes with no role to play in a nation where they don't belong fighting a fight they can't explain and don't know how to defend. 
5. Full Metal Jacket Casualties of War may be one of the very few mainstream films to depict the US military as outright villains, but in terms of narrative, Full Metal Jacket is almost as audacious. The tour de force opening act of this flick follows Leonard Pyle Lawrence at a boot camp while a drill sergeant gradually destroys his confidence, personality, and humanity. So he grabs his rifle, crack shot that he is by the way, and kills himself and the sergeant. The second half of the film follows the misfortunes of a dead-eyed troop of soldiers in Vietnam, but by now the point is clear. The institutions break individuals, the individuals are sent to the slaughter, and any claims of bravery or heroism are a tragic joke in this bleak, blackly comic horror story. 4. Inglorious Bastards Film fans the world over were aware that when Quentin Tarantino announced that he was helming a war film, it would be somehow subversive but few viewers were prepared for just how playful and daring the Helmers approach would be. For one thing, it's a war movie where long, talky sit-downs dominate the on-screen action, with the lengthy film largely eschewing depictions of large-scale conflict. Not only that, but rather than centre on a single protagonist, the film flits between countless characters and focuses on the intersections between their lives, not to mention the completely off-the-rails ending. Nobody saw that one coming, I can tell you that. 3. The Battle of Algiers 1966's The Battle of Algiers is a piece of film history as well as a subversive war movie. An intense and unsparing depiction of guerrilla warfare in action, the film was released shortly after Algeria won independence from its colonial oppressors in France, despite the best attempts, and by best attempts I mean torture, of paratroopers to remain in control of the region. With a cast of non-professional actors, many of whom were survivors of the actual occupation, the film subverted the traditional present of war film narratives by utilising a docudrama style. Despite the eventual outcome of the real life conflicts, this acclaimed film condemns excessive violence committed by both factions, and even manages to humanise the paratroopers involved, despite the aforementioned torture. 2. Das Boot Poseidon remaker Wolfgang Peterson won the attention of Hollywood with Das Boot, his 1981 war film following the tragic fate of the German submarine U-96's doomed crew. It is another in a long line of compelling evidence for the theory that Peterson only got into filmmaking in order to make audiences care about small crews, only to tragically kill them off. And it's this empathy which made the film so radical, as Das Boot was one of the earliest and remains one of the most successful cinematic attempts at humanising everyday individuals who made up the Nazi forces. It's uncomfortable territory, but the film's lengthy runtime and initially languid pace gives viewers sufficient time to grow attached to the inhabitants of the U-boat. When the eventual inevitable tragedy strikes, it is striking just how much sympathy Peterson can engender in historical villains, and the film's subtle character building serves to ground the reality that for a great many participants, war is less of a calling and more a simply unavoidable fact of life. 1. The Deer Hunter the Deer Hunter's original and daring perspective provides striking commentary on how movies view history and how they distort reality in the process. After all, even in the most daringly defiant Vietnam movies, almost all of the story's action takes place in the invaded country. In contrast, The Deer Hunter is a Vietnam drama wherein the majority of the film's action takes place at a wedding party before its characters are conscripted into the war. Where earlier films dropped viewers directly into the action and offered only a throwaway line about a wife at home, in The Deer Hunter, the action stays at home with the wives, the camaraderie between friends, the lost joys of their everyday lives and the broken connections between them. For many veterans, Vietnam is exactly what the deer hunter depicts it as, a stain on an up till that point alright life. In this film, the horror of war came home.